All right, here is problem 29 off the math subject, practice GRE test. And you're, we're getting into graph theory here. How many non-isomorphic trees on five vertices exist? Or a tree is a connected graph with no cycles. So a graph uh, is vertices and edges, and it's connected if you can get from any vertex to any other vertex, kind of walking on the edges. And no cycles, that means no loops. So how many non-isomorphic trees with five vertices exist? Um, well, there's also, graph theory gets really interesting. There's lots of different theorems, and there's probably even a theorem that'll solve this really quickly. However, you're not supposed to know a whole lot of graph theory by the time you take this test. Um, so they can't get you, they can't really test you on any of these big theorems. Um, often, Fibonacci sequence, for example, pops up here. The only way you can create this type of a tree is um, by looking at this type or this type and building up. So the previous two cases add up to get you this new case, has some Fibonacci going on. Uh, there's lots of different things you can do with graph theory. You, you can make matrices and zeros and ones, zero if the vertices are not connected, ones if they are connected, and then do this all algebraically. Uh, but for the sake of this test, most of the questions you can kind of just answer by sort of walking your way through, common sensing your way through, listing out all the possibilities. So in this case, how many non-isomorphic trees with five vertices exist? Um, hint, at most five. How do I know it's at most five? Because this five? No, because look at the answers. One, two, three, four, five. Right, they're telling me in this problem that there aren't that many. And when you see that there aren't that many, a good solving, problem solving, testing method is just to list them all out, make an exhaustive list. So how many exist on five vertices? Well, I'm not sure, but if I only had one vertex, there would certainly only be one tree. Right, you have that one vertex, nothing you can do with it. If you have two vertices, there's still only one tree. Um, two vertices, you connect them with an edge. They have to be connected because we're talking about a connected graph. So there's only one up to an isomorphism. Uh, what if you have three vertices? You might think it gets more interesting. It doesn't. There's still just one. Here, I'll draw it for you. This guy right here. Um, you might think, well, I could do something different. What if I do this? That looks totally different. No, they're isomorphic. Uh, and either way, I have three vertices, and two of them are just connected to that third vertex, which is connected to the other two. Same graph here and here, up to an isomorphism. Uh, and that's the only possibility I have. How do I know that's the only possibility? Well, if, if you think about max neighbors, if you have three vertices, then pick on any one of those vertices, there's only two others remaining. So the maximum amount of neighbors that that guy can be connected to is two. Um, and you must have one that's connected to two other guys in order to be uh, connected, in order for the graph to be connected. So the minimum is two, the maximum is two. That means there must be a vertex connected to two others. We must be talking about this graph right here. Uh, okay, what about four? Changing color. Um, four, now I have enough vertices to draw some different pictures. Okay, instead of thinking about it that way, think about this way. If you have four vertices, you must have a subgraph of three vertices. So I have these three right here. My question is just which vertex do I want to add on to? All right, here's my new vertex right here. Well, I can't connect him to two vertices because that would create a loop. So I have three choices. I can connect him to this guy, this guy, or this guy. Connect him here, that would be one option. Or I could connect him here, maybe in a different color, dotted line, I don't know. That would be another option. I don't like the way that looks. It looks like there's a loop. So there you go, there's one option, and then your second option would be to connect them to this guy. And you might think, oh right, my third option down here. No, this is not your third option, because your third option would be isomorphic to your first option. If you put a line right here, you have this kind of straight line graph, same idea, whether it's one or three. So what this is telling me is that if I have four vertices, I really only have two options. This guy, which is option one here, or this guy, which is option two here. So here are my options on four vertices. Um, but the question doesn't ask you about four vertices, it asks you about five vertices. So how many options do you have if you have five vertices? Well, let's consider two cases. What if you start with this guy right here? And you gotta add one vertex. I could add it right here, sure, that's a perfectly good solution. I could add it here and note that those would not be isomorphic. How do I know they're not isomorphic? Well, in this case, max neighbors is two. In this case, max neighbors is three. Uh, what if you added it right here? No, that'd be the same as this guy if you just kind of flip things over. So 
sure let's even write that in. That's the second case again. What if you add it right here? Uh, that's the first case again. So there's only two options if I build off this guy. But I can also build off this guy. And I have two options. There's really two different types of vertices here. There's these guys that, are that have one neighbor and this guy that has three neighbors. So I could pick one of these and add on a vertex. You're like, oh, there's your third case. There's a new case. Nope. That's not a new case. This is our number two again here. Right? Note that I have one vertex with three neighbors. That's this guy or this guy here. Um, and then I have one vertex with two neighbors. That would be this guy here. And then all other vertices have one neighbor. So really, if I add on there, I'm just talking about that number two case again. Uh, what if I add on to this middle guy? Well, that's a new one. That'll be my third case. How do I know that's new? Because now I have a vertex with four neighbors. I never have seen that before, so that must be a non-isomorphic case. And that's all of my options, because each of these vertices are the same as this one. So there's another two there, and there's another two there. Uh, so I've listed all of my possibilities. There are three non-isomorphic trees on five vertices.